Welcome to Square One Games. My name is Exonovan, and this is my road to completion guide for Final Fantasy X HD Remaster. In this series, I will show you how to unlock every trophy this game has to offer, and I really hope you enjoy the run. Make sure to read the announcements before watching the guide. I'll also have them listed below in the description and my pinned comment along with some other valuable information about the series. Before we start, I just want to give a special shout out to those of you who are supporting me each month on Patreon and PayPal. Your continued financial support allows me to make quality road to completion guides for trophy and achievement hunters from all around the world. I could not do this without all of you, so thank you. If you've recently supported me through PayPal, I've read your messages and I appreciate your support as well. Enjoy the guide. Select Final Fantasy X from the main menu. Choose the Expert's Fear Grid from the Character Advancement System menu. The soundtrack is entirely up to you and will not affect any trophies. You have the option to switch this at any point from the config menu. Talk to the kids on the left to trigger a dialogue sequence. I've cut out more than 12 hours of dialogue and cutscenes to cram as much content into each episode as possible. This game does not let you skip dialogue sequences or cutscenes, so you'll have to frequently pause the video to stay in step with the guide. With that said, you can speed up certain dialogue sequences by spamming the X button. I ran a contest over on Patreon for all my Crazy 88 members and Monkey D. Luffy decided to change this character's name to Bieber. Crazy 88 members also had the opportunity to change other characters' names but decided against it. To avoid confusion, you may want to change his name to Bieber as well, but I'll leave that up to you. Talk to the girls on the right, then follow me to the first combat sequence. Can I have your autograph? Of course. Well, gotta go. Cheer for me. I was in a coffee shop running away from home when I heard the news. Our hero, checked, gone, vanished into thin air. <laughs> My dad must have been his biggest fan. I knew how sad he'd be. Heck, we all were that day. Zanar, I says to myself, what are you thinking? Make way, make Coming Hey! Hey, let go! Combat can feel overwhelming at first, but it's really simple once you get the hang of it. The most important thing to learn now is how to operate the commands menu, which is in the bottom left of the screen. Currently, Bieber has two options, attack and item. Press X to select attack, then use the D-pad to switch between enemies and party members. If the cursor is red, you're highlighting an enemy. If the cursor is green, you're highlighting a party member. Use the D-pad to move the green cursor to Aran and press X to attack. Aran currently has three options in his commands menu, but again, we want to press X to attack. Use the D-pad to move the green cursor to Aran and press X to perform the attack. The goal is to kill Aran. If you look in the bottom right corner of the screen, you'll see a list of party members along with their HP and MP. HP stands for health points and MP stands for magic points. Each character has a yellow bar underneath their name and stats called an overdrive gauge. When the gauge is full, characters can perform special actions from the commands menu called overdrives. I'll demonstrate this later in the episode. After Aran dies, spam the triangle button to defend with Bieber. Defend 60 times to learn a new overdrive mode called Loner. Keep checking the help menu at the top of the screen for a message that says, Bieber has learned overdrive mode Loner, as well as an audio cue for verification. Press down on the D-pad and tap the X button to select an item from the commands menu. 
scroll over the Phoenix down and press X so we can bring Arn back to life. Have both characters attack the monsters so we can push through to the next fight. Don't bother going after all of them. Cut the ones that matter and run. Spam the X button to quickly kill the monsters in the front row. When the commands menu appears, notice how the word overdrive is visible over the attack command. Press left on the D-pad and select Bushido to view Arn's overdrives. Currently he only has one called Dragon Fang. Press X to select Dragon Fang to inflict damage on all the monsters. It's not necessary to complete the quick time event. Attack until the boss unleashes Demi again. Ha! Press left on the D-pad and choose Sword Play to view Bieber's overdrives. He only has one at the moment called Spiral Cut, and we have to use it 10 times to learn his next overdrive called Slice and Dice. Again, it's not necessary to complete the quick time event. Now have both characters perform attacks to defeat the boss. The white flash that sometimes occurs during an attack signifies that you've landed a critical hit, which deals extra damage. Touch the Traveler Sphere to recover your HP and MP, then save your progress. Because this game has unskippable dialogue and cutscenes, it's very important that you create saves as often as possible. This will ensure you're always making forward progress in the event of a power outage, console error, or corrupted save file. When the next fight begins, spam the X button to attack the enemies until prompted to destroy the tanker.
My old man? Press the O button to swim to your father. I thought about a lot of things. Press triangle to access the main menu. Scroll down to overdrive and press X. Press X again to select Bieber. Press the O button to cancel the cursor's current position. Scroll over to Set Mode to view a list of overdrive modes. Now press X to select Loner from the list. Select Config from the main menu and adjust the following options. Set your cursor to Memory. your Aeons to short, the map is personal preference but I prefer to have it off, and vibration, this is also personal preference but I prefer to have it on. Touch the next traveler sphere to recover your HP then jump into the water. Manipulating combat turn order is the key to winning battles, especially since our character's stats will be low for a majority of the campaign. When the battle begins, look in the middle right of the screen to view the combat turn order. Notice how Bieber gets the first move, followed by monster B, C, then A. One of the best ways to manipulate turn order is to access the submenu by pressing right on the D-pad. Go back and forth between the menus and you'll notice an adjustment being made to Bieber's second move. See how his icon shifts to the left? This shift signifies a quicker second move, but it's not enough to move him up in the turn order. Anytime this happens, we need to press triangle to defend. Also, keep an eye on Bieber's overdrive gauge. Press right on the D-pad and you'll notice that Bieber gets an extra turn, but more importantly, this extra turn comes before monsters A, B, and C. Anytime this happens, select weapon from the sub-menu and choose a sword. Since we only have one, choose the long sword. Now let's see if we can manipulate the turn order again. This time Bieber got an extra turn, but only before monster A, so let's defend. Watch the overdrive gauge after the monster's attack. See how it filled up again? So let's review. Swap to the longsword anytime Bieber's extra turn jumps above all the monsters, and defend anytime it doesn't. Press left on the D-pad and use spiral cut to defeat monster A. The help menu at the top of the screen will assist you with targeting the correct monster. Completing the quick time event is irrelevant. Since we have Bieber's overdrive mode set to loner, his overdrive gauge fills up each time it's his turn as long as he's fighting solo. Practice manipulating turn order and build up another overdrive.
Select item from the commands menu and use a potion to restore 200 HP. Now kill Monster B with Spiral Cut. Manipulate turn order to build up as much overdrive as possible before the fight ends. This time it doesn't matter if your extra turn jumps above the boss's turn because the fight is scripted. One more thing, I have done my absolute best to predict the combat turn order for every battle in the entire game, but RNG still plays a factor in some fights. It's okay if your turn order is slightly different from mine as long as you stick to the strategy. If at any point you feel you're falling behind my turn order, simply swap weapons to catch up. frying pan and into the freezer. I thought I was going to die in this place. The heat. Fire. Grab the withered bouquet and flint. Set up a save and build a fire. Manipulate turn order so we can hit the monster with spiral cut. Remember, do not complete the quick time event. Use a potion to heal the monster after landing the first spiral cut. Manipulate turn orders so we can hit the monster four times with spiral cut. You can obviously use potions at any time, but it's best to let your HP drop below 200.
my side? Cool. Have the mystery character use a grenade to complete the tutorial. Kill the mystery character so we can have Bieber hit the monster with a few more spiral cuts. There it is, Slice and Dice. Now let's talk about the importance of completing Bieber's Overdrive Quick Time Event. Slice and Dice will hit an enemy three times if we fail the Quick Time Event, and six times if we're successful. During the Overdrive Quick Time Event, press the X button when the slider moves to the center of the bar to land six hits in a row. Practice this a few times, then finish off the monster with an attack. Expect to get AP, items, and equipment after most battles. The equipment is irrelevant for a majority of the guide, but you should always check to make sure your AP and items match mine. Items are found on the left side of the second reward screen. Verify that you've earned two ability spheres before moving on. You understand me? All right, I'll work. Talk to the mystery character and spam the X button to speed through the tutorial. Oh, almost forgot. 
I'll teach you how to use the sphere grid later. Talk to the man on the left holding the gun to receive three potions, then set up a save. Don't worry about grabbing the all bed primer in the back right corner because we can get it later. Talk to the mystery character again to trigger the next sequence. We found some ancient ruins right beneath us. Dive until the camera angle changes. If you get attacked, press right on the D-pad and have both characters escape the fight. Now swim back to the surface, press square to return to the ship and get three more potions. We'll go as soon as you're ready. Check your inventory to see if you have at least eight potions. If you need more, simply dive, return to the ship, and talk to the man again. Swim around until you get attacked. The goal is to fill up the mystery character's overdrive gauge by defending so we can one-hit kill the next boss. If you're fighting one monster, use a potion anytime your HP drops below 100. If you're fighting two monsters, make the HP threshold 150.
We can drastically reduce the length of our run by escaping all random battles unless I specify otherwise. Set up a save when you reach the underwater facility, then interact with the control panel to continue. Swim through the tunnel to engage in a scripted battle against piranhas. Have the mystery character steal at least one grenade from a piranha. Attack with both characters to finish the battle. Examine the machine, then backtrack through the tunnel. When the fight begins, have the mystery character use her overdrive called Mix. Scroll down to grenade and press the X button twice to mix two grenades together. Press the X button a third time to unleash an attack called Flash Flood to overkill the boss. Overkills give us more AP, items, and equipment after battles. We should get four power spheres instead of two for overkilling this boss. Follow me to complete the underwater sequence, then speak with the mystery character to trigger the next event.
When the save prompt appears, select no. Open the chest around the corner and get the moon crest, then speak with the Blitzball players. You hungry? Okay, back to the village. I get you something. Talk to Waka, set up a save, and I'll see you in episode two. Be good. I felt like I could trust this Waka. <laughs>